Opening day of the 24-25 season. I'm here with Frank. We watched the game together. Arsenal 2, Wolves 0. What's that? I hope you're not... That's not a... Have you not missed that? Have you not missed Yeah, it? I have actually. The smell yeah. of victory. <laughs> I thought he was going to go something personal, really, but hey, <laughs> never mind. But hey, um, yeah, Frank, man, uh, we watched the game together. Yeah. I know you were pretty vocal throughout, as you always are. Always. Uh, tell the people what you thought of the game today. I was happy. You know, I don't I think overall over the full 90, and I think obviously, like you said, we watched the game together and I think we pretty much agreed. It wasn't fantastic football overall, but at the start of the season, I don't really expect that from any team, let alone Arsenal. And it's, you know... I just wanted to see a positive result and, you know, a 2-0 win to start off the season, the clean sheet, you know, some individual performances to be proud of. I'm very happy with the way we performed today. So, you know, it's a, it's a win is a win at the end of the day and we can look for, you know, better performances going towards the start as we get into the season. OK, I'll pick you up on something you said. There. You yep. said uh, individual performances you mm -hmm. can be proud of. Tell the people who you're referring to. Well, I think the obvious one for me would be the standout and my man of the match today and... Surprise, surprise, it's the star boy again in Bakayo Saki. He got the goal, he got the assist. And for a period of time, he was only like he's probably the only one that looked, you know, somewhat fantastic today. And then we'll get onto the other one in a moment. But there was a few shaky performances, and I don't want to be too positive, so I'll sort of brush over it. You know, I think me and you were quite critical of Kai Habits at some points in the game. Um, you know, he did No, that was you. No, 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 no. Don't try. You're, com you're, you're coming in with me, don't worry. Um, you know, he looks a bit clunky throughout the game and that's not a problem. He, get the, he, he gets the goal in the end, so you can't complain too much with a situation like that. I think another one for me also would be Thomas Partey, who looked very, very shaky today. And if that is going to be the case, I am quite looking forward to the potential of having Marino coming in because I mm. think if we're going to even think about challenging, challenging for this title this season, we cannot afford for Mikel to be stubborn in any way, shape or form. Because if party is not going to be up to the standards, and I have heard reports coming out, for, I don't know how accurate these are, that you know they're not too pleased with his progress and they think he might be on the decline, then maybe it might be time to potentially bring a Thomas Partey out of the side and make way, make room, sorry, for a Marina. But only time will tell. Like I said, it's the first game of the season, so I don't want to be too hasty. And in terms of the other great performer today, I think Sharoy said it perfectly. You know, David Raya for me was superb today. I don't think I'd go as far to say that was probably the best save he's made in the Arsenal career. I would probably go back to the one that he made last season against Spurs, I think mm -hmm. in his debut game. Fantastic save. But the one he was referring to from the header was an amazing save. And as a goalkeeper myself, I can really appreciate mm -hmm. a save like that. But you know, the clean sheet was a massive thing. There was about three or four other saves in the game as well. So for me, if you're looking at the two potential men of the matches, you've got to choose between Bakayo Saka and David Ray. Absolutely. Yeah, I would agree with that. Mm -hmm. um, certainly. Um, anyone else impressed you apart from those two? Um, that's a good question. I thought Zinchenko looked pretty good when he was on the field. Obviously, he didn't get a full 90 today. And I, I, thought, I think it sort of brings you into the debate about who should be starting in that left-back position over the next few games. I thought Zinchenko done a good enough job today. Obviously, he didn't play the full 90. And he had a very good pre-season as well. However, I'm still not too confident when it comes to you know, a game away against Aston Villa, for example. And I think we all know why, you know, Aston Villa are going to be much more of a threat than a Wolverhampton and Wanderers side, especially at Villa Park. And I don't know if he can handle, you know, that quality running at him from that from from those wings. So maybe it's a situation where, you know, we saw Yuri and Timber today look very good when he came on. And that's probably who I would go with to start at Villa Park. And maybe at some point, if we can get to see Calafiori in that game as well, it would be fantastic. But the competition in that left-back spot this season, it's nice to have that level of competition for once. Oh, definitely, definitely, <laughs> definitely. Uh, quick word on the manager. How yeah. do you think he, um, A, his team selection, the yeah. way he managed the substitutions, his in-game management, what's your assessment of Mikel Arteta today? I was happy with the team selection. Um, the only situation in which I would have changed anything in any way, shape or form would have been, would have been starting Leandro Trossard over a Gabriel Martinelli. And the reason being is not necessarily because of anything that Gabriel Martinelli's done wrong. Although I must say, I don't think he was overly fantastic in the preseason. I know he got the goal against Manchester United, but apart from that, you know, you look at the Emirates Cup, the end product wasn't exactly there. And Trossard last season... One of, us play, one of our players of the season scored plenty of goals. I would have personally gone for Leandro Trossard on that, on that left-hand side. We saw him when he came on. He looked pretty sharp as well. Um, but ultimately, it hasn't affected us that Leandro Trossard didn't you know, start the game. Mm. And obviously, when he came on, it was a very good cameo. But that would have been the only change I would have made. So I'm quite happy with Mikel Arteta in that sense. You know, that again, we didn't do anything wrong, as mm. per se. Okay, fine. Um, now, I... I'm not sure if I've had a chance to talk to you about it. It's certainly not on camera anyway, but there's been a debate raging about, do we need a striker? Now, based on what you've seen in the preseason, yep. what you've seen today, where do you stand on that? Are you 
okay with the options we've got right now or do you think we really need to push the boat out and bring in a striker? I'm okay with the options that we've got right now, but I don't think we should be comfortable with okay. We all need to be in a situation where we're completely happy with the options that we've got. Don't get me wrong. Kai Havertz had a fantastic season. In the end last season, I think it was 13 or 14 goals that he got. And Gabriel Jesus, when he did make his appearances, I know there was a lot of criticism about his finishing, but you know, he has a fairly decent season. Nothing fantastic, but you know, coming on for, get for Kai Havertz in situations, he looked pretty good. I still think we do need that clinical number nine. And I'm slightly worried that we haven't at this point in time, because obviously the opportunity to sign a few strikers is, you know, it's passing. You know, we've seen players like Xerxes go to Manchester United and getting his first goal for the club last season. We was linked with a player like that. You, but it's the thing is, you've still got the players like Osimhen, the Ivan Tonys available. And I think the situation, it will, be, it, will begin to be, it will begin to be a situation where we run it down to the last few days of the transfer window and then we end up overpaying for someone. So if we are going to sign a striker, which I still think we do need to do, it needs to be soon. Absolutely. Mm. Okay. Um, well said. I have to agree with you. Mm -hmm. um, right, let's go forward now to next week because we've got this one out of the way. Mm -hmm. um, it's always a welcome bonus to have your first game at home, yep. but you've got to win it and you move on to the next one. Absolutely. Now, next week we're away against Villa, who a lot of people, myself included, think they'll be top four contenders. Absolutely. So it's potentially a very difficult game. Now, is there anyone you'd like to see? Now, let me just keep you straight. Yep. Do you want to see keep the same team or would you bring anyone else? in from the start on that game next week, Saturday? So the only two changes that I would make for next Saturday's game would be the two down the left-hand side. Like I said, I'm not 100% confident in Zinchenko's defensive ability when it comes to coming up against a team like Aston Villa at Villa Park. So I would actually start Yuri and Timber in, Yuri and Timber in a game like that. If we're in a situation where we're in need of a goal or we're chasing the game or something like that, then I can completely understand an Alexander Zinchenko coming onto the field. But from the start, I think you do need to see that defensive ability that Yuri and Timber has to start on that left-hand side. And then the other one for me, I think obviously Gabriel Martin really got his opportunity to start the game today. Wasn't bad by any, 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 in any way, shape or form, but I think Leandro Trossard also needs to be given his opportunity to, to be in the starting 11 ahead of such big games. You know, like we've got the North London Derby coming up, we've got the game against Manchester City coming up. So I think they both need a fair crack at the whip to prove themselves for those big games. So I would go with... Leandro, uh, Leandro Trossard and Yuri and Timber down that left-hand side, and that's the only changes that I'd make. Okay. And uh, on the subs bench, anyone else that we didn't see today that you think um, mm. could have a good season this season? I don't know if it's just me, but I do really want to see the youngsters get involved in some way, shape or form. And I understand, I don't want to force them into the lineup, obviously, but I do want to see them get a lot more minutes than they did last season. I think the stat that I saw... Uh, a couple of days ago, when you look at, for example, it was a Manchester United versus Arsenal. We only had 13 minutes, I believe, of teenagers playing Premier League football, whereas a Manchester United had, I think it was 4,000 4, odd minutes. I understand that Manchester United were in a completely different situation for us fighting for Europe while we were fighting for the title. But there's going to be games where we're going to be 2 3 no up. The game's pretty much dead. These are the sort of games that we should see an Ethan Winieri or a Miles Lewis Skelly being involved um, in the Arsenal team. And if they're not going to be involved, they're at a crucial point in their career, you know, coming up to that 17, 18 years old mark that they need to be playing men's football. If the plan isn't to have them in the first team, then we need to be looking at the idea of getting them out on loan. Okay. And finally, I'm going to end with this question. I've not had a chance to ask you. Okay. Um, so far, but in terms of, because it's very early, mm -hmm. it's a marathon, not a sprint, it's only yep. one game, 37 games left to go. However, I know where this come is. match day 38, <laughs> where do you expect Arsenal to end up this season in the Premier League? I'm going to go out on a limb and say it early. I think you know what's coming as well. No, tell you the know, people. Third time lucky. We've been chasing for the last three seasons now. I think this will be the season that sees Arsenal lift the trophy and I think that trophy is going to be the Premier League. But obviously that is subject to seeing how Manchester City play against Chelsea. Um, so I think it's tomorrow that the Chelsea game is and then obviously we've got the game coming up against them very early. And if we can, you know, get a win against Manchester City this early on in the season, it really shows that we mean business. So don't quote me on it. Don't quote me on it yet. But I personally believe that we will win the league this season.